We have learned uh, several steady state principles and uh, requirements for non isolated converters like the whole second balance, the power balance, and so on. Now, in addition to meeting all of these requirements, the converters with uh, transformer isolation they also need to satisfy a few more requirements, like for example, this uh, flex continuity. Now, before we can discuss these requirements or the new principles, we need to clearly understand this concept of dot polarity uh, for magnetic components uh, as shown here, and also understand what these uh, dots mean. So the focus of this video is on the need for this dot representation and understanding the dot convention in the analysis of uh, isolated converters. In, uh, in power converters, we make um, inductors or transformers by, um, by taking a core, um, usually a ferrite core for high frequency power converters. It could be a toroid as shown here or it could be an EE core or any, any other shape. So we take this magnetic core and we wind a coil of certain number of turns. Okay. So now for this uh, winding, there are only two possible ways of uh, winding them on the on the core. So in this toroid core example, um, so one way is uh, you, st you start the wire from here and uh, go on top of the ferrite core and then go down and come from the bottom of the core to the other side. And then the next turn will start going on top of the core, then go inside, come out from the bottom of the core. And the third turn will again go to the on the top and then come out at the bottom and may return to the external circuit. Okay. So if you look at the current direction the in the external circuit it um, comes in here and uh, the return path is shown here. Now inside the um, the inductor in this example the current path is uh, left to right on top of the core once again left to right left to right and so on. Okay. Um, if you look at um, this structure from from the top so if you view from here what you see is um, uh, this winding is wound in a counterclockwise direction CCW stands for counterclockwise so that is one way the other way is uh, once again in the same toroidal core we can start uh, um, the wire from here and instead of going on top of the toroid you go behind the toroid so I'll show that as a dotted line and then come out here and then go on top then once again for the second turn go inside um, at the bottom then come out on the top and uh, again go inside come out on the top for the third turn okay. so once again the current direction in the external circuit is uh, coming in here and the return path is shown here but different from the first uh, case the um, current direction on the uh, on top of the the toroidal core is right to left here. So it's right to left, right to left, and once again right to left. Okay. So as before, if you view this from the top, like this, if you view from here, what you see is a clockwise winding. So we'll call that as clockwise. So those are the only two ways of winding this coil, and uh, we refer to this as the sense of winding, or the or the direction of winding. So next, uh, let's see what is the effect of uh, these two sense of uh, winding or uh, winding directions. Okay. So this is the case one that I showed in the previous slide, um, where the where the winding direction, um, for example, if you view from the top, it is um, counterclockwise. Okay. All right. So um, so let's uh, let's try to determine the uh, flex direction if the current direction is uh, as shown in this uh, in this coil. Okay. So you could use um, um, your favorite uh, method to determine the flex. So for example, if you view from here as shown, what you see is a current flowing in the counterclockwise direction. So that will result in a flex flowing up, that is uh, towards the viewer. Okay? So the flex will be pointing up. Or you could use the right hand rule. So in which case you would um, curl the fingers of the right hand in the direction of the current and then the thumb will be pointing in the flex direction as again as shown in this uh, figure. Okay. So therefore the flex direction due to this current inside the core is uh, as shown here. Okay. So it's clockwise in the inside the core. Now if you consider the second case where the sense of winding direction was just the opposite and for the same current direction from the external circuit 
uh, if you try to determine the flex again for example if you view from here what you see is a is a clockwise current direction therefore the flex would be uh, a cross or meaning it is um, um, pointing downwards away from the observer or you could again use the right hand rule um, point the uh, fingers or curl the fingers in the current direction as shown here so that is right to left here and the flex would be given by the direction in which the thumb is pointing so that is downwards here okay? so therefore the flex inside the core for current direction as indicated here would be uh, as shown in this animation okay? so it is in the counterclockwise direction just the opposite of what we had in the in the case one okay? so what you've established is that if you change the sense of uh, winding direction then it results in um, completely opposite direction of flex inside the core for the same current direction okay. so that has a big impact on um, uh, on the transformers and uh, multiple winding inductors and so on but for the single winding inductors which is what is shown in both the cases just one winding inductor uh, it really doesn't matter what is the uh, winding direction you still get the same inductance and it is the same current voltage relationship regardless of what the winding directions are okay? but as we'll see in the later slides if we have another winding or if you have transformers then it really matters uh, quite a bit uh, quite a lot uh, on what is the uh, sense of winding of each sense of winding direction for each of those uh, multiple windings so let's uh, go ahead and look at the case of a uh, two winding transformer so this is uh, a single coil on this transformer the first coil and um, um, as we established in the previous uh, slide for this sense of winding direction that is uh, counterclockwise looking from the top and for a current I1 entering here the flex in the core is in this direction clockwise and uh, let's call that as phi1 okay. now I'm going to go ahead and add a second winding as the say the secondary of the transformer and uh, here also I maintain the same sense of direction of the winding so this also is counterclockwise as viewed from the top and if the current I2 is entering here then without doing any analysis I can immediately say that the flex phi2 produced by this current is also in the same clockwise direction inside the core um, similar to phi1 okay. now if I consider the second case where again I have a two coil uh, transformer the first coil is uh, same winding direction as the the first uh, transformer whereas the second coil I purposely make the sense of uh, winding direction the opposite so if you view from the top for this coil it is clockwise the winding direction is clockwise okay. therefore um, uh, so even before that the flex phi1 produced by I1 is in the clockwise direction as in the first case whereas um, now I2 again entering at this point because of the reversed sense of winding direction of the second coil the flex phi2 produced by this current i2 is in the opposite direction so again we don't have to do an analysis just by uh, seeing i1 phi1 relationship we can say i2 phi2 is going to be just the opposite because of the opposite um, winding uh, sense of winding direction so so that clearly shows that if the um, winding direction is reversed then the direction of the flex in the core is reversed and uh, that has a big impact because um, in one case the flexes and due to these currents they add so the net flex so that is an important term the net flex in the core in one case is adding so one case is phi1 plus phi2 and in the second case the net flex in the, inside the core is uh, phi1 minus phi2 so that's going to affect several circuit variables okay next um, I will uh, take an example of an uh, EE core uh, an EE core as uh, shown here okay. so here also I'm going to consider uh, a two coil um, two coil uh, transformer so the first coil is um, um, shown here and uh, as before this uh, has view viewing from the top it has a counterclockwise sense of uh, winding direction um, therefore if you look at the flex inside the core uh, if you look at the center limb uh, you could use for example the right hand rule and the, um, you can see that the flex is pointing in the upward direction in the center limb okay? 
so the flex path um, is shown here so we, we saw that it is uh, going up in the center limb and um, uh, assuming the uh, reluctance in both these paths is the same then this flex divides equally into two two paths and uh, one completes in this um, outer limb and the other completes through this outer limb okay. so we can see that the flex direction in um, in the center limb is uh, bottom to the top and in both the outer limbs it is top to the bottom okay. now um, so I would represent this uh, flex direction only in the center limb as um, going bottom to the top now let's go ahead and add the second coil okay. so for one case uh, uh, shown here uh, I maintain the same sense of winding direction so once again viewing, viewing from the top the um, uh, what you see is a counterclockwise um, winding direction therefore a current that enters here would produce a flex in the same direction as the first coil and uh, so we would ind indicate that by this uh, blue line so that shows that the flex in the core due to both these currents add okay. so whereas uh, if I um, uh, put the second coil in the opposite sense of winding direction uh, so now it is clockwise as viewed from the top then the flex produced by I2 again in the same direction from the external circuit is going to be uh, in the top to bottom direction and the two flexes now cancel each other or they subtract from each other so because the uh, sense of winding direction affects the uh, flex direction in the core it has uh, a big impact on the operation of the power converter okay? so therefore it becomes uh, very important to connect the uh, the correct ends of the winding to the rest of the circuit okay? so in fact uh, a valid circuit for one uh, winding direction may become a completely invalid circuit if you reverse the uh, direction of the of the winding okay? so for example the uh, circuit that is shown here this is a uh, is a valid circuit so this is valid as long as the uh, winding, the sense of winding directions are as indicated here. So the first winding, the primary winding, uh, again viewed from the top, it has um, um, looks like a counterclockwise sense of winding direction. Whereas the uh, the second winding, again looking from the top, it has uh, a clockwise sense of winding direction. So for this arrangement, this is a valid circuit. We will see later that this is nothing but your flyback isolated converter interfacing two um, batteries for example but if I reverse the uh, if I keep the winding direction for the first winding the same but I uh, remove this winding and put a, another winding with a different sense of winding direction as you can see uh, viewed from the top this winding also has a counterclockwise sense of winding direction uh, with the first one remaining unchanged so this circuit is um, uh, should remove that so this circuit is uh, completely wrong uh, this is an invalid circuit it will result in um, short circuiting of some voltage sources and um, it will violate several um, principles required for uh, valid operation of isolated converters